Hello everybody, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is the Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, October 2nd and this is the search news we covered, covered over the Search Roundtable at SARoundtable.com over the past week. <coughs> um, a couple things out of XMX East. First, Gary from Google basically said what John Mueller said a couple weeks ago that the next Penguin update should be the real-time version, meaning it's updated continuously. Um, and the second thing is that it should be out soon. Um, John, uh, Gary said foreseeable future. I think there is a timeline in his head and I think it's going to happen probably by the end of this month, but I guess time will tell. On the Panda front, Panda 4.2, which started rolling out July 18th or so, is still continuing to roll out according to Gary. Gary said he checked on Wednesday with the Google team responsible for Panda. And they did say that it's still rolling out. Google did tell us it's going to take several months, and it's only been like two and a half months. So I suspect this will continue to roll out through the early next year, 2016, and so forth. I did check my own data um, on around July 18th or so when it first started rolling out. I did see like a 10, 5, 10 percent increase in, in Google organic traffic. Then sometime in mid-August, it went back to 0 percent, like I was still in the penalty. And then September 3rd, things went back up, and now I'm at about 20 percent on average in an uptick of my Google traffic. So it definitely seems to be the case that it's still rolling out, and this still seems to be improvement across my website specifically. Um, so it's good to see. Maria um, at Google. <coughs> said at XMX East announced it, that there's going to be an additional second uh, ranking boost for app indexing. Specifically, if you're using the Google API, the app indexing API that Google provides, Google will give you a second uh, ranking boost, not for just having an app, but also for using their API because Google is able to get additional data such as start and end sessions uh, from that API. Uh, so that's an important thing if you're using it. Also, Google announced at XMX East uh, the other day, I believe on Wednesday, that they have a brand new iOS app indexing documentation because of iOS 9. So that's released, I think that came out like Sunday night. Um, and also, they have added uh, three new features to the Google Search Console around app indexing. Uh, so definitely take a look at that. Um, it's pretty cool features. Um, and definitely play around with that. This past month, in terms of Google <coughs> traffic, there's definitely been something going on. People are saying, was it Panda? Was it something else? I see it with my own website, September 3rd, I told you, and then other, other upticks throughout the month. I think it's Panda related, but other people are saying it's not Panda related. Um, some people want to name it the Tenster update because of the passing of Tenster, and figure name an update after him. But there's definitely a lot of fluctuations in the Google search rankings um, in September. Some say September 3rd, which I saw. Some say September 17th. There's lots of fluctuations around the rankings and stuff like that going around with Google. Google has not confirmed any of these things. They definitely did confirm that Panda is still rolling out, but that wouldn't um, signify major swings um, in September. So if you did see notice changes around September 3rd, September 17th, stuff like that, um, even last week as well, there's definitely other webmasters um, who have noticed that as well, so you're not crazy, you're not alone. A shocking thing that came out of XMX East yesterday, actually, from Gary, uh, was that he said, don't remove the authorship markup if you haven't already. Um, he said, we may use it in the future. The team at Google may want to use it in the future. He said that, it kind of blew me away because I know John Mueller, one, said we're no longer processing this data, it's just it's not just the UAI change, it's actually, actually not even reading it, not processing it at all. And he said this back in 2014. Google decommissioned authorship back in August. In June, they removed the, before that June, they actually removed the, the faces from the results. Then they completely removed authorship and the stuff behind it, in, at least as Google told us, in August of 2014. And then in September, John Mueller was like mocking, mocking the webmasters by using rel agent as a joke instead of using rel author. Um, I do think Google still uses authorship on some form, not necessarily the markup, but authorship on some form with in-depth articles. So I think that might be what Gary was implying, but it was really shocking to hear him say, don't remove your authorship. I happened to look. I haven't removed my authorship from my website, but again, 
I'm shocked that he would actually say that. I, it just seems very weird. Now the first click free, this is a program that's been with Google for a really long time. Um, if you're a Google News publisher or you Google search, whatever, if you have a website that you pay for access, like subscription services towards your website, Google lets publishers say the first click is free. And before it was actually first five clicks were free, and anything after that you had to go, you could actually show them a paywall to get access to your website. But Google changed that from five to three, and the reason they changed that was uh, publishers were upset. They actually said they wanted less access, that five was too much, they want three plus because people are accessing this content on desktop, tablet, mobile, and really five clicks is five clicks per device. At least that's how most people implement it. <coughs> so making that change really kind of limits uh, uh, users from trying to get access to your content for free when you don't want to. On the Google News front also, Google has finally removed the requirement, sorry, a little sick, uh, the requirement to have three digits, at least three digits in your URLs. That was a requirement that Google had for a long, long time. They were, they basically, you had to have three digits in your URL to be included in Google News, unless, there was one exception, unless you use Google Sitemaps to feed them your content. Uh, but now that requirement is no longer required. You can actually get rid of the, the digits in your URLs and you'll be fine. Google changed the language in the Google Search Console remove URL feature. Uh, it we used to say uh, create a new removal request. They changed that to say just tempor temporarily hide. The reason they changed this job Mueller said was to just make it a little clear that this is a limited time. They didn't change the actual functionality of this feature, but they changed the the verbiage of the of the console just to make it clear to users what's the actual what's actually going to happen. John Mueller said at a hangout the other day that there isn't an SEO advantage to linking externally. So if I link to a government website, a military website other websites, there's no SEO advantage for me to link to relevant websites. It might help my users, it might make my website better, but Google's not saying I'm giving you a ranking benefit because you're linking to this site or that site. Um, it's not going to help you. I know, I believe Google actually does give a negative ranking factor for linking to bad neighborhoods, uh, but linking to good neighborhoods, Google says there's no external benefit to that. Um, Google also said I would shy away from using the same words on the page too often. Um, Google said this in the, John Mueller said this in the Google Hangout, basically saying, um, in general, Google's able to figure out what's happening on the web page. You don't have to use the same word like blue widget, blue widget, blue widget, blue widget over and over again. They're able to figure it out. It does look a bit spammy. If you go ahead and use the same word over and over again, it does look like you worth nothing. So shy away from that, he said. Um, Gary explained that um, when you disavow an IP address, you're not disavowing all the domain names on that IP address, you're just disavowing the IP address from linking to you. So in shared hosting cases where there's hundreds of websites in the same, sharing the same IP address, if you I disavow the IP address, it's, only gonna, it's not going to disavow those hundreds of domain names. It's just going to disavow anybody linking to you using the 192.168, whatever the IP address that is linking to you. Another thing that people have wondered is Google Search Console. If you have hundreds of profiles in there, a lot of those you're an SEO and you do site recovery and you have 90% of your clients are previously or penalized customers, does that go ahead and look bad for the other 10% of your customers in your profile? John Mueller said it doesn't make sense. If you're an agency, obviously, you probably have lots of, of customers and penalties. And just because you have customers and penalties doesn't mean the other customers should be penalized. Google does understand that. I've heard contradictory information from non-Google sources about this, but it's good to see Google say, hey, we do understand that SEOs do have lots of customers in their search console with penalties, so that should go ahead and be a red flag about other sites in your, in your console. Google added a URL to the knowledge graph. So if you do a search for a brand um, or whatever, 
Google finally added a hyperlink to the brand, official brand's website. So do a search for Fox News, PBS, Neil Young, whatever it might be, Google's going to now going to include, uh, when possible, a link to the actual website, which Google hasn't done before, and that's nice to see Google doing that now. Google My Business has updated their navigation and UI for business orders to log in to make it a bit easier for them to actually use the features. I go through all the different changes here if you want to take a look at that. We're kind of running later in any other video. Uh, Google AdSense has come out with a new certified publishing, publisher uh, partner program. So now you can actually find AdSense experts to help you monetize your websites in this program, or you as, a, as an expert can actually apply to be part of this program and hopefully get new business become, by becoming certified by Google. Google AdSense ads for some advertisers, especially new advertisers, for some reason is not loading. They can't get the ads to load for a lot of new advertisers. You get you, Basically, these new AdSense publishers are getting approvals, saying, hey, Google has approved you. Your ad should be live within the next few minutes. And days, weeks later, the ads are still not live. There seems to be some type of bug, and Google's hopefully going to fix that. Uh, finally, uh, this is a weird thing. Microsoft made a partnership with Baidu uh, to basically power the Microsoft Edge browser in China with Baidu search as opposed to Microsoft Big Search. Um, is that, does that mean Google, uh, Microsoft Big is giving up in China? Or is this something else? So it's a very weird partnership, I, I think, to be weird. Um, in any event, because Big is really trying to expand their market share, even internationally. In any event, thank you so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz. Today is Friday, October 2nd. I am again offline Monday and Tuesday. I hope to have posts scheduled. I have a lot of stuff I can write um, based on stuff going on at the conference. Um, and everyone have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.